What is up guys, Randomonium here, and today we're going to be talking about the importance of limiting your champion pool. Now this is a very similar video to the one I did last year on this topic, and chances are I'm probably going to do another video like this one next year. Why you ask? Is it because I have some form of memory loss? No. Is it because I've run out of ideas? No. Is it because I'm desperate for views? No, uh, well, yes, but that's not the main reason. The main reason why I'm talking to you about limiting your champion pools is because it's one of the simplest things you can do to increase how quickly you can climb. And remember who's telling you how important this information is. Let's roll back to the intro scene in case you forgot. Wait for it. Wait for it. And freeze frame. Do you see that? Enhance. I've got the freaking word random in my name. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know how random I can be. One day I'm doing lore videos. The next day I'm doing coaching. The next day I'm doing fantasy LCS videos. And maybe on the weekend I'll put together a theory crafting video. And who the heck knows what I'm going to be putting out next week. The point is, is that I have a very hard time sticking with only one thing, and I'm the same with League. I am the anti-one-trick pony. I own every champion, and I'll play any role, any champion, any time. Support Anivia? Why not? Caitlyn Top? Sure. Teemo Jungle? I'll hate you for making me play Teemo, but goddammit, I'll do it. So please, take it from me. You need to limit your champion pool if you want to maximize how quickly you can climb in ranked. Why, you ask? It's easiest to explain by using an analogy. Let's say you want to start lifting weights and you want to put on 20 pounds of muscle mass. Is it more effective to do one curl and then one squat and then one bench and then one dip and then one crunch and then one row and then repeat? Or is it more effective to do one exercise at a time and do full sets? Obviously, you're going to see better results if you do full sets of one exercise before moving on to the next exercise. The same is true for League. Each game can be thought of as a rep. If you play 20 games a week with 20 different champions, it's not near as effective as playing 20 games a week with only one or two champions. How much should you limit your champion pool, you ask? Ideally, you want to have one primary and one backup champion for each role. The reason why you want to have two for each role, and not just your primary and secondary role, is that autofill is a bitch, and you don't want to be stuck playing a champion that you're unfamiliar with when you're at risk of getting demoted or you're one win away from your series. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have 10 champions ready to go for ranked. In a lot of cases, you can play a champion in multiple roles. For example, I've been playing a lot of Nautilus top lane, but if I ever get auto-filled into support or even jungle, I can play him in those roles as well. The only time you want to exceed this two champion per role rule is if your champions have a particularly high pick or ban rate. If that's the case, you may need to add a tertiary champion to your pool. This, of course, is assuming three bands per team. When bands get increased to five per team, you may need to reevaluate how often your champions are getting banned and possibly add a fourth champion to either your primary or secondary role. But that's it. No more than four champions in a given role, and ideally you want to play only two champions per role. So how do you decide which champions you want to play for each role? Well, there's two opposing philosophies. The first is what I like to call class specialization. These players excel at a particular play style of champions, but they feel much less comfortable playing other play styles. For example, they might only play tanks, or they might only play assassins, or they might only play champions that give you cancer. The advantage of these kind of players is that they're extremely experienced with those type of champions, and they can completely take over a game and hard carry in the right situations. 
The downside of these kind of players is that the subclass that they specialize in may not fit well with every team comp, and they're more prone to getting placed into counter matchups, so they're also more prone to being dead weight on the team. If you're one of these players, then for your primary champion, you want to pick the champion that you play best within a given subclass. And for your secondary champion, you want to pick the champion that you play second best within that particular subclass. Pretty simple. For example, if you're a top laner who likes playing Juggernauts, then maybe your primary champion would be Nasus, and your backup champion would be Yorick. That means in most games you're going to be playing Nasus, but if Nasus is picked or banned, you can easily shift to playing Yorick. Of course, this philosophy is dependent on you knowing which subclass each champion belongs to, and what are the trade-offs for each champion within each subclass. If that's a topic that sounds interesting to you, and you'd like me to make a video on it, then please leave a comment below. The second philosophy is what I like to call class diversification. So in case you didn't know, lanes are kind of a complex game of rock, paper, scissors. Not in the sense that you automatically win if you pick the right counter matchups, but that certain types of champions are more favored in lanes against certain other types of champions. In bot lane, you've got kill lanes, poke lanes, and sustain lanes. Kill lanes demolish sustain lanes, poke lanes outtrade kill lanes, and sustain lanes can outlast poke lanes. In mid lane, you've got short range, medium range, and long range champions. Medium range champions beat short range champions traditionally because they typically have some sort of innate tankiness or sustain, and they can survive the burst of a short range champion. Long range champions typically beat out medium range champions because medium range champions lack the mobility to close the distance against long range champions. However, short range champions usually beat the long range champions because they do usually have the mobility to close the distance and they can frequently outburst a long range champion. In top lane, it's not so much a game of rock, paper, scissors as it is a game of rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, Zombie, Satan, Monkey, whatever the heck that thing is. My point is, is the top lane is complicated, which is probably why the jungler never goes up there. So anyway, back to the philosophy at hand. Class diversification. The theory behind this is that if you have one champion in two out of the three sides, you can pretty much always guarantee yourself a favorable matchup if your lane opponent picks first. For example, if your primary champion in mid lane is an assassin, then that means that you're worried about them picking a medium range tanky sustained champion, which means that your backup champion should be a long range mage. The advantages of this philosophy is that your champion pool fits a wider variety of team comps, and you have the capability to counterpick your opponent. The disadvantage is you won't be strong with either of your champions as someone who limits themselves to a specific subclass or play style because you won't be as experienced as someone who only plays one specific subclass. Which philosophy you favor is really up to you. A simple way to put it is that class specialization is higher risk and higher reward, while class diversification is more well-rounded. And what philosophy you choose may even vary depending on what role we're talking about. For example, for my primary and secondary roles, I lean more towards class diversification because I feel confident enough in those roles and I want the flexibility that class diversification provides. However, in my off roles where I might get auto-filled, I lean more towards class specialization since I play those roles much less often and I need every advantage that I can get. So does this mean that you can only play a couple of champions for the rest of your life? Hell no. But if you want to maximize how quickly you can climb, you definitely want to restrict your champion pool. However, reevaluating your champion pool on a patchly or a monthly basis is an extremely good idea. Just because you play two champions per role doesn't mean that it has to be the same champions patch after patch after patch. For example, if one of your main champions gets nerfed, but one of your other champions that you enjoy playing gets a buff, then you should consider swapping in that champion as your primary or your backup. What you should never do is be playing 50 games on 50 different champions. Play 50 games with one champion, then play 50 games with another champion, 
etc., etc., etc. You will improve and master champions much faster if you play a single champion game after game after game, rather than sprinkling in a game with that champion every week or two. So let's end this video with a worst case scenario, because who doesn't love worst case scenarios, and see if we can logic our way out of it. Let's say you get autofilled into your worst role after going on a pretty massive losing streak, and you're currently sitting at zero LP, and you're most likely going to be facing a demotion if you lose this game. It's pretty much a must-win game for you. Additionally, no one on your team is willing to trade roles, and to make matters worse, the enemy team has banned both your primary and your backup champion for that role. Oh, and you're also first pick. So what do you do? Do you just say, screw it, rage at your team, and run it down mid? Hell no, you're going to figure this out and win this game, because you're a smart monkey. Yes, you are! My advice to you if you find yourself in this situation, or perhaps one a little bit less severe, is to play a champion that is either simple, or forgiving, or both. If you're auto-filled into top lane, jungle, or support, then pick a tank. Not only will your team love you because someone is actually playing a tank on the team, but you're also much less likely to get raged at because tanks, by definition, are tanky, which means that if you end up messing up, or wind up out of position, chances are you're not going to be instantly killed like you would if you were playing a squishy champion. If you somehow get auto-filled into mid or ADC, and if this does happen, you should definitely buy a lottery ticket, then my advice to you is to play someone simple. Someone who can farm easily and yet provide a ton of use to their team without having an overly complicated kit. And for the love of God, do not pick a random champion that you saw a streamer or a pro player play. You should never be like, damn, I got out of field as jungle. Who should I play? Well, I did see Meteos play Lee Sin at Worlds. I mean, worst case scenario, I can miss all of my cues for the entire game. And as long as I get a good flash kick at the 50 minute mark, I'm sure everybody's going to call me a Lee Sin God. YOLO! Also, never play a champion that you don't know how to play just because your teammates want you to play it. If one of your allies says, you know, Riven or Vayne would be really great in this team comp, because let's be honest, who doesn't enjoy having a Riven or a Vayne on their team, am I right? That doesn't mean you should insta-lock Riven or Vayne. Even if Riven or Vayne is a fantastic choice for the team, if you can't play the champion, and that's not a fantastic choice for you to play them. It's actually a horrible choice that will most likely result in a very quick loss and your team raging at you all game. When in doubt, play simple or forgiving champions, not ones that require hashtag mechanics. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you like the content on this channel, please subscribe. And if you want me to do future videos on each class and subclass in the game, and what makes each champion unique within each subclass, then leave a comment below on what subclass you'd like to see first. I hope you all have a fantastic day. This is Randomonium, signing off.